said he would turn it around praise be to God hallelujah praise be to God let's get our Bibles and let's go to Psalm 67 praise the Lord we're talking about and actually bridging the the um, theme from last month concerning increase and uh, this month concerning a higher place of praise and God wants us to see there's a connection in Scripture with praise and increase. Psalm 67, verses 1 through 7. The word says, God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah. That your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Say with me, praise your way to increase. Father, give us clarity of thought and clarity of mind and grace to minister your life-giving word on tonight. 
I pray that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that you would just put us in the flow of the anointing, the flow of the Holy Spirit. That your people might be blessed and lifted up. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. And we bless you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Lord, I bless your name even now. We worship you, Father. We bless you, Father. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Give us your grace. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In this particular psalm, God wants us to see four things. First, we see in the first verse a prayer and profession for increase. So we're going to cover some other scriptures, but I really want you to get this passage in your Bible so we can just go through it and look at it verse to verse. But the first thing, as I said, is a prayer and a profession for increase. And we see that in verse one, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause your face, cause his face to shine upon us. And then number two, a purpose for increase, which is that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. And then a praise for increase. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people how righteously and govern the nations on earth. And then we see a promise for increase. In verses 5, 6, and 7, he says, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth will yield her what? Increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall what? Shall fear him. Praise God. Now, the first thing, let's go back to verse 1. We're going to see something here. In this prayer and profession for the favor of increase. We've often taught, and, and God has given us even a ream of word from time to time to encourage God's people to praise him for increase. And I believe that God has supernaturally triggered increase at time just through us hearing that word and giving God praise. Just like the children of God, praise God, entered the promised land. And, 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 and the first battle, praise God, was at the wall of Jericho. And when they began to shout, the walls fell down and they began to go in and possess their possessions. Yeah. So what we see here, praise God, is, is that praise is often connected to deliverance, to stealing the enemy and the avenger, the thief that comes to steal, kill and destroy. And it is connected, praise God, to the increase that God wants to give us. Our increase begins with prayer, and Jesus taught us to ask for increase. In John 16 and 24, he says, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your what? That your joy may be what? Full. Until now, you've asked what? Nothing in my name. And then he says, ask, and you will receive. Say, ask. And you will receive. So some things that we receive are triggered by what? By asking. And he said you will receive that your joy may be what? Full. He says it's something similar in Matthew 7 and 7 in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks what? Receives. Notice, 
Everyone who asks receive. And so this is direction. This is uh, a, 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 a instruction to God's people. If you want to receive, what do you need to do? You need to ask. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you shall find. If you want to find, you got to seek. If you want doors to open, you got to knock. And it says, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks find. To him who knock, it will be open. Or which of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a what? A stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a what? A serpent. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, which is in heaven, give good things to those who what? To those who what? Who ask him. Now, there are those who suggest that, you know, we can receive increase just by delighting ourselves in the Lord through praise. And that prayer isn't really necessary to get increase. But this is not an either or proposition. Even when we ask, we're supposed to get praise. The Bible said, don't worry about anything. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will what? God and protect your hearts and mind. And certainly there are times that God's people have received blessing that they did not specifically pray for. Glory to God. In Psalm 139, verse 17 through 18, the New Living Translation says, How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be what? Numbered. So we're daily, praise God, uh, loaded down with benefits that we don't even have the ability to enumerate. And certainly we didn't ask for all of them. He says, your thoughts concerning me are, are, are precious. They cannot be numbered. He said, I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Praise God. So I've been asleep. So it was a whole lot God was doing for me when I wasn't even conscious. Hallelujah to God. So we receive daily so much more than we can even remember to ask. Just like Solomon, God gave him increase he did not particularly ask for. He asked God for wisdom to go in and out before God's people. But God gave him increase. God gave him the wisdom. God gave him understanding and understanding heart. And then also God gave him wealth. Yeah. Amen, somebody. But that doesn't negate the fact that we can initiate increase through prayer. Oh, yes. Some increase comes without praying because we can't pray for all the increase we get. But that does not change the fact, praise God, hallelujah. It's just like you can, you can go places without driving. Amen. Amen, somebody. But thank God you can drive and get where you want to go. Amen. Sometimes you can ride the bus. But thank God there's another way to get where you want to go. You can take the initiative, get in your car, drive it, and go at your leisure. Amen. And some blessings just come because they're sovereignly ordained. God reigns on the just and the unjust. He daily loads us down with benefits. Praise God. But that doesn't change the fact that we can initiate increase by prayer. And sometimes increase is delayed or even foregone because we simply did not ask. James 4 and 2 says, you desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you quarrel and you fight and quarrel. He says, you do not have, why? Because you do not ask. So Jesus taught us to ask. James says, sometimes you don't have because you do not ask. Now, certainly they had something, but there were things that they could have gotten that they didn't have because they didn't ask. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Glory to God. He says, and he said, you do not have because you do not ask. So we can take the reverse. If we want to have, let's ask. If you want increase, ask for it. There are many examples in the scripture. Let me just show you a few examples in the scripture of people who got increased because they asked. 
In Psalm 118 and 25, he says, save now, I pray, O Lord, O Lord, I pray, send now what? Prosperity. You can lift this prayer right out the scripture. Send now prosperity. What is he doing? He's asking for increase. John 1, 3rd John 1, 2, he says, beloved, I pray, which means I ask, that you may what? Prosper in all things and be in health. Just as your soul, what? Prosperous. What is he asking for? He's asking for prosperity. He's asking for increase. For Chronicles 4 and 10 says, Jabez cried out to God, to the God of Israel, Oh, that thou would what? Bless me and enlarge my territory. What is he doing? He's praying. He's asking for increase. And how did God respond? He said, let your hand be with me. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. And if God granted his request, he'll grant our request because the same Lord is rich unto all who call upon his name. He's of no respect of persons. And then when the people of Israel were faced with famine and faced with shortage, what did they do in the book of Joel? They sanctified a fast. They called a solemn assembly. And they prayed. They asked for a supernatural turnaround of material blessings. Amen. They weren't asking for a spiritual turnaround or spiritual blessing. That was in their court. All they had to do is turn (laughs) and repent. Amen, Amen, somebody. But what they needed God to do is to work in the environment and in the economy. For a economic financial turnaround. Now, the spiritual turnaround, all they had to do is just do that. (laughs) Repent. Get right with God. And and, and that's something God won't do for us. God don't repent for anybody. Amen, somebody. God don't confess sins for anybody. You got to do that yourself. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. But when it terms, comes to the supernatural, financial, material increase in your life, glory to God. And over and above spiritual increase, such as signs and wonders and miracles, we need to ask for that increase. And what happened in the book of Joel, they were under severe judgment. They had to repent. And God said, now, this is what you need to do. You need to sanctify fast. You need to call a solemn assembly and you need to come and pray. And if you pray right. I'm going to manifest some increase. You're going to see a turnaround. Let's go to Joel 2 and 16. He says, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders and gather the the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the, the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should the people say, where is their God? Now, why were people saying, where is their God? Because they were suffering an economic downturn. There was famine. There was desperation. There was acute poverty. They needed a financial material turnaround. Amen, somebody. And when they say, spare your people, what are they doing? What are they doing at that moment? They are praying. They're asking God to spare his people. In other words, don't let us starve to death. Do not let your inheritance be an object of scorn. Huh? Why? Because of the, can- the years that the canker worm had eaten up. Because they were in acute poverty. Because they were suffering such economic loss. A byword among the nations. Why should the people say, where is their God? Notice what it says. Then the Lord will be jealous for his land. And will take pity on his people and the Lord will reply to them. But how is he going to reply? He's going to reply with increase. He says, I am sending you grain and new wine and olive oil. Are these spiritual things or material things? Those are material things. And God promises send them material blessings in response to their prayers. Why? It's what they needed. And how many know you need more than spiritual blessings? Amen. 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 Joy is a spiritual blessing. 
peace is a spiritual blessing. But if you work 10 miles from where you, uh, where you live, you need more than joy to get to work. You need more than peace to get to work. You need transportation. Huh? And how many know outdoors, on the ground, or under a bridge, you can have love, joy, peace, gentleness. You can be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. But how many of you want to sleep under love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, and meekness? You want to sleep with it, but you want to sleep under a roof. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So don't discount the fact that we need material blessings. Amen, somebody. Thank God for the spiritual things, and God will do that. But he also wants us to understand that sometimes our need is not spiritual, it's natural. He said, the Lord will reply, I'm sending you grain, I'm sending you new wine, oil, and, 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 and he said, enough to satisfy you what fully. And sometimes people try to spiritualize everything. Say that new wine, praise God, that's the Holy Ghost. Now, you, you, the Holy Ghost could represent new wine, olive oil could represent the anointing, true, but that's not what he's talking about right here. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Praise God, because the truth of the matter is the the uh, the other than the priest and the prophet, the rest of these folk wasn't going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost back then. No way. The day was going to come where they could get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the last day. Amen. When he poured out of his spirit upon all flesh, Joel prophesied. But that wasn't happening back then. Amen. So he's talking about material blessing. He said, neither again will I make you what? An object of scorn to the nation. So why were they an object of scorn and ridicule? Because they were suffering economically. Verse 24 says, the threshing floor will, 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 will be what? Filled with grain. Not, he, said, he didn't say, I'm just going to give you just enough so y'all can have, you know, uh, uh, two meals a day. Huh? He said, your threshing floor will be filled with grains. Your vats will what? Overflow with new wine and oil. And I'll repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. That's why they were under reproach because the locusts had eaten all their crops. And the great locusts and the young locusts and the, and the other locusts and the locust swarm. He said, my great army that I sent against you because they were under divine chastisement. He said, no, in verse 26, because of this prayer, he said, you will eat in plenty. He said, you will have plenty to eat until you are full and you will do what? You will praise the name of the Lord, your God. Hallelujah to God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel and I am the Lord your God and that there is no other never again will my people be what put to shame but what triggered this prophecy prayer he said gather the people gather the priests and let them cry let them cry out to God before the psalmist praised God for increase the psalmist prayed for increase in our opening text Psalm 67 and 1 God be merciful be merciful to us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us and when he said God be merciful unto us and bless us the first thing we need to see there is that when we pray for increase we need to pray realizing that we're undeserving We're undeserving, but yet we need God's help. Lord, be merciful and bless us. Not, Lord, I've done everything right and bless me. Hmm? I know I got a blessing coming. Huh? No, God, be merciful unto us and bless us. The basis of our prayer for increase is God's mercy and his unmerited favor, grace. Matter of fact, if we were translating, praise God, this merciful word 
in our modern English, is uh, a, a better translation would probably be God be gracious to us. Because this word merciful means to bend, to stoop in kindness to an inferior. To stoop in kindness to what? An inferior, someone who don't deserve it. What do we call that? Unmerited favor. To stoop in kindness to an inferior, to favor, from the, the, the strong uh, Greek and Hebrew dictionary, it says to, to, to favor, to bestow, or to implore that one move to favor by a petition. So he's saying, God, show us your favor. Be gracious to us. Show us your favor and bless us. And then he says, cause your face to shine upon us. Do what? Cause your face to shine upon us. And this is a phrase uh, that God established for the children of Israel and for the priests to pronounce blessing upon God's people. So when they were saying, God, cause your face to shine upon us, they're saying, God, release the blessing that has been pronounced upon us. Matter of fact, this might be also a, a, a profession of faith or pronouncing a blessing. Number 6 and 22 says it like this. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak to who? To Aaron and to his son saying, on this wise you shall what? Bless the children of Israel. Now how are you going to bless them? Saying unto them. Saying unto them. Because that's how we bless. We bless by saying. That's why I said this could be called a profession of faith. Praise God. We bless by what? Saying. How do you curse? By saying. So just like people curse by saying, you bless by saying. Amen. And as much as the world will curse people, the saints need to bless people. But we bless with more. Now, we can bless a person, so to speak, uh, 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 tangibly, materially, by giving them something, giving them finances, praise God. But the primary use of the word bless is to say, to speak something that releases the favor of God on their life. When uh, Isaac blessed Jacob by accident, huh? how did he do it? Did he write him out a will? Did he cut him a check? Huh? Did he divide up the land and say, hey, this is yours? What did he do when he blessed him? He spoke. He spoke. Amen. And God was saying the blessing of God, the prosperity, the increase of God upon this nation is going to be released by a speaking priest. Hallelujah. He says, speak unto Aaron to his son, saying, on this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless you and keep you. Now, how many know God don't want us just using vain repetition? He doesn't want us speaking idle words. What is an idle word? A useless, empty, huh? Without utility word. So if God is telling them to say this, it must have impact. Glory to God. And I believe one of the reasons the nation of Israel and the children of Israel have been blessed all over this world. Huh? Because God incorporated into their, into their faith, into their religion, speak the speaking of blessing. And without unction, without a hook of my side, without something coming over them, just, you know, uh, impressing them uh, and prompting them, they do it as a matter of practice, just based on the validity of God's word. And God honors his word. He said, this is what you say. The Lord bless thee and keep you. God want us to say some stuff so he can do some stuff. Because he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose is loose. He said, the Lord make his what? Face shine upon you. Isn't that exactly what the psalmist was saying in Psalm 67? Isn't that exact, exactly what they were praying? They were praying the word. They were praying based on what God had already promised. Well, see, 
you know, when you pray, you're just taking God what he already said. His word is returning to him void. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done. You are just acting on what God has already told you is yours. Prayer is not trying to get God to do something is out of his will and he don't want to do. Prayer is receiving from God through faith and through the process he has established with his hand is already open to give you. His thoughts concerning you are already more than the sands of the sea. He said before you call, I already got your answer. God wants to do it for his people. It is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen, somebody. So he tells them, he says, Lord, make your face shine upon thee and what? And be gracious to you. So the, the turning of God's face is symbolic of God showing favor, being gracious. It's, it's not two different things here. It's, 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 it's a, uh, a verbiage that tells us the same thing. The Lord calls his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. In other words, the phrase causing his face to shine towards you, meaning he's being gracious to you. He's showing you favor. Glory to God. Amen. It's, the, it's, it's, like, it's like somebody, you asking them for something, and they say, what does that mean you don't have when you're asking them for something, and they turn and look the other way? That means you got no favor here. <laughs> you're not getting anything. I'm showing you no grace. <laughs> so when God turns his face towards us, just like turning away his face would be disfavor and an unaccepted petition to turn his face towards you would be favor and an accepted petition. So the Lord make his face shine towards you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Again, what is your countenance? He's, he's, he's not only turning his face towards you, but he's looking at you with a smile. Now, some folk looking at you, and their face is towards you, but you can read the expression on your face, and you know the answer is no. Huh? I heard Bishop Roger Henry, he was talking, and he was teaching in the class about how tone makes a difference. And not only do you need to read the words, but you need to understand the tone. Huh? Glory to God. And just like if you just read the words, you know, just like if, if, if somebody has been, you know, uh, pestering them, that mom uh, about something, you know, a little child, you know, just keep pestering mom about when you're going to do this, when you're going to. And, and, and mom say, ask me again. <laughs> Does she really mean ask me again? <laughs> no, when she said, ask me again, her tone says, you better not ask me again. <laughs> Huh? So not only does God turn his face towards us, he lifts up his countenance upon us. In other words, he gives us a favorable e expression. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you what? Peace. Peace. Glory to God. And notice what it said in verse 27. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. Ooh, glory to God. It's time to put your name on some folk. How do you do that? By pronouncing a blessing in the name of the Lord as God's representative. Glory to God. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and what? And I will bless them. And I, but what's the context? The context, they were given instruction to speak this blessing, to pronounce this blessing over the children of Israel as a practice. And that's when God says, I will do it. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. God says, I'm going to hasten my word to perform it, but you got to speak my word. You got to speak this blessing. You need to speak it over your family. Speak it over your children. Speak it over your own life. Glory, glory to God. Hey, I need to speak it over this congregation. I'm going to speak it over you tonight. Hey, hallelujah to God. 
So this could also be considered a profession of faith for the favor of increase. Uh, when he says, God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. So not only should we pray for the blessing, but as kings and priests, we need to pronounce and speak the blessing yeah. over our lives and over others in the name of the Lord. Somebody say you need to speak it. Mark 11 and 23, he says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall say unto, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he said, that they shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he what saith. He shall have whatsoever he what saith. He shall have whatsoever he what saith. Amen, somebody. So pr prayer and profession go together. We pray, but we need to speak it. Amen. Verily I say unto you, who shall ever shall say unto this mountain, be removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in heart, but shall believe that those things that he what, that he saith, that they shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Read, let's go down to verse 24. Let's read that. Glory to God. I'm going to show you something. Verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So in one verse, he's talks about saying it. In the next verse, he's talking about praying it. Because what we pray, we need to profess. What you pray, you need to say. When you believe God, huh? Who oh, glory to God has heard your prayer. What does amen mean? It means so be it. So what is it? It is a profession of faith. Amen is not hanging up the phone and telling God bye. But that's where a lot of believers think of it. They think you, you end your prayer like sincerely yours, you know, uh, good night, goodbye. They think amen is like saying, okay, I'm ending the prayer, so bye God. No, a man is not telling God bye-bye. A man is a profession of faith. You are saying, I believe that I receive, and so be it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to, glory to God. So, praise God. He said, we are have whatsoever he what he said. Romans 12 and 14. He said, bless them that what? Persecute you. And curse not. So as believers, what are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be blessing. But understand, when we as kings and priests under God, when we bless, our words have power. God is not telling us to just be saying stuff just for, for pretense as a religious act, as a put on. Huh? He said, you're going to give an account of every idle word you speak. So he's not telling us to speak idle words, empty useless word. If he tell us to bless them that curse you, that means our speaking the word of blessing over them impacts their lives. Hallelujah. So they ain't even saved. But sometimes you can draw them by speaking a blessing. Prayer evangelism. Can I pray for you? Is there anything happening in your life that that because they can't get a prayer through? But how many know, praise God, God can get their attention when a believer prays for them in the name of Jesus and they associate the manifestation, the blessing and the answer to that prayer to the name of Jesus. That'll draw people to Jesus and people will get saved because somebody prayed for them. Had them on their mind and sacrificed the time and prayed for them. Had no doubt that the Lord would bring them out. They'll be so glad somebody prayed for them. Amen, somebody. 
Glory to God. Sometimes we wonder, you know, uh, uh, about all the different scripts that we can memorize to win people to Jesus Christ. Praise God. But remember the basic components. Praise God. With loving kindness have I drawn you just by praying for people and letting them know. Let me tell you, God loves you. Let me pray for this situation concerning you. Praise God. And believe that God will hear. God will do something just as a sign and a wonder. Yeah, glory to God to draw people to Jesus Christ. We need to bless. Bless those hard-headed children. Bless those rebellious. See, see you know sad? Some of the saints cursing their children. Pronouncing all kind of evil over them. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Well, you know, they need, they need, they need, you know, they, they need God to do something to them because they're rebellious and hard headed. And, you know, uh, but 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 even when God chastises, you want it to be redemptive. Yeah. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Huh? Because before I was afflicted, I went astray. But whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And he does it that we may be partakers of his holiness. He said, praise God, that one who was rebellious at Corinth deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. But for what purpose? That his spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord. We want, even when, when, when God chastised him, we need to be speaking the blessing so it is redemptive and not destructive. You want another Peter, not a Judas. Both of them went through. But it did not end the same for both. Say amen, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need to speak that blessing. And curse not. And curse not. That's the book. Amen, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Philippians 1 and 2, he says, grace be unto you and peace from God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Understand we read this as a salutation, but understand what Paul is doing. And he does it letter after letter after letter. Peter does the same thing. What are they doing? They are pronouncing a blessing. Grace be unto you. He's not just stating a spiritual truth or a spiritual principle or fact. He's not just saying salvation, grace be to you. He is saying he's speaking a blessing. He's speaking God's favor over their lives. Grace be unto you. And peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what he believed? Whatever I bound on earth is bound in heaven. These people are going to be blessed because I'm speaking a blessing. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. When Paul uses this phrase, it is not just a spiritual truth, but he's speaking and releasing a blessing of favor and peace, which could also be translated prosperity over their lives. So that's what we see. We see the prayer. We see the prayer and the profession of faith. But let's quickly go. The next thing we see in this passage is a purpose for the favor of increase. One purpose for financial increase and blessing in the kingdom of God is to advance the teaching uh, of God's way, who is Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. They didn't have the revelation, but we have it in the New Testament. But it is to advance the teaching of God's way in the earth and the spreading of God's plan of salvation to all nations. That's why we won't increase. Look at what it says. And, and, and let's read these two verses together in Psalm 67, 1 through, through 2. He says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his what? His face to shine upon us. Selah. And then he tells us why. That your way may be known on earth. Your salvation among all nations. Say your way may be known on earth. Your salvation among all nations. And notice, I think it, you, you put a, could, have, could have put a conjunction in between, but this translation doesn't put a conjunction in between. It doesn't say that your way may be known on earth and your salvation. Hmm? Among all nations. He said that your way may be known on earth. Your salvation among all nations. 
Because for the New Testament believer, the way and salvation is one and the same. Jesus Christ is the way of salvation. He is the way and he is our salvation. And we need to increase so that the way can be known in the earth. So that we can spread God's plan of salvation to all the nations. That's the first purpose. Another purpose. Another purpose of financial increase and blessing, praise God, uh, and other blessings in the kingdom of God is to provoke reverence for God throughout the earth that draws men into the kingdom. Notice what he said there when, when he talks about this blessing in verse 7. He says, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. And the word fear is not terror. Because why are they going to be terrified because God blessing us? Although when the children of Israel went into the promised land, a lot of the nations were terrified because God was blessing them. That's why he tried to hire Balaam to curse them. <laughs> and he said, I can't curse them because God has blessed them. But it's really, this word fear is reverential awe. And what happens is God want to bless us. So all the ends of the earth will be in awe of him. We'll respect him. We'll reverence him. We see this principle over and over again. Psalm 22, verse 26 to 27. It says, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart will live forever. And all what? All the ends of the world shall what? Shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindred of the nation shall what? Shall worship before thee. But what was the trigger? Verse 26. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. And they shall praise the Lord that seek him. In other words, God will bless us and we're going to give him the praise. We're going to give him the credit. We're going to let the world know who did it. Who did it? And we need to do more than say who did it at church. We need to tell the world who did it. Amen, somebody. Amen. We need to be humble enough to not take all the credit. The meek, the humble, glory to God. He's going to satisfy. And they shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart will live forever. And what's going to happen? All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn unto the Lord. See, God want to bless us. So that the world can see that he's a blesser. Even when you pay your tithe, it's to increase that all in the earth concerning God. Notice what it says in Malachi 3.10. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be food in my house. And thereby put me to the test. Say, per, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until huh, there is no more need. Huh? He said, and I will rebuke the devour for you so that I will not, it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. Your vine, praise God, in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. What's going to happen in verse 12? Then all nations will call you blessed. That means God wants to demonstrate the increase in our lives. And he wants it associated with his name. Huh? He said, all nations will call you blessed and yours will be a delightful land. God don't want his children living in misery. He'll cut up a shanda. You need to say, Lord, I paid my tithe. I claim what you promised me. I'm going to have a visible manifested blessing. All nations will call me blessed. God want all nations calling his children who are tithers blessed. God want to bless those that fear him. Somebody say all nations. That means it needs to be worldwide. Psalm 7, 8, 5 through 8. It says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel for which he commanded our father that they should make them known to their children. 
Glory to God. So not only did he give a, a law, but he also gave a testimony. He gave a record of God's supernatural acts. Testimonies are important. And testimonies are a form of praise. See, to praise God, you don't have to be able to sing. You may not be able to carry a tune in a bucket. But if you can tell what God has done, you're giving God praise. You're giving him credit. And God established a testimony in Jacob. He had a record of things he had done for them, praise God, as well as a law uh, that he commanded them to keep. Verse 6, he said, for what purpose? That the generation to come might know them, even the children which are not born, uh, that should be born, I should say, who should arrive and declare them to their children. Notice what, why. He said, verse 7, that they might set their hope in God and not forget what? The works. Huh? And not forget what? The works, but keep his commandments. Not forget the works, the deeds, but keep his commandments. Not forget the works, but what? But keep his commandments. You know, sometimes the thing that causes people to backslide, they forget what God has done. They forget his works. Huh? But when you remember what God has done, there'll be something down inside telling you to go ahead. Huh? He said that they might set their hope in God. He said, I, I, I want you to remember the te I want you to remember the law, but I also want you to remember the testimonies. I want you to remember his works yeah. and not forget them. Why? They are faith triggers. That's why I'm on, I'm on, during this month of praise, the Lord has inspired me to teach on testimonies because that is a higher place of praise as well. We need to testify. And, 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 and let me tell you something, praise God. Uh, a lot, a lot, most of us grew up in church in testimony service. Yeah. But a whole lot of what we saw and heard was not testimony service. Yeah. It's I got the flow now. <laughs> so I'm going to say whatever I want to say and get whatever I want to get off my chest. And before long, the testimony service died because its purpose and power was lost. Testimonies, when we first grew up, were faith triggers. And by hearing another person's testimony about what God did for them, it triggered somebody else's faith that God could do it for them. Somebody testified about how they got saved, how they got delivered. Somebody in the audience who wasn't saved, who had the same issue, took a hold to faith and set their hope in God and got delivered. Somebody else testified about how God healed them and somebody else who was struggling with illness in their body set their hope in God. That praise became a faith trigger and they said, Lord, I thank you. I'm going to the altar tonight. Somebody else testified that they were saved and sanctified and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And there were so many folk testifying about being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost that everybody knew that you could get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And people came to the altar expecting to be filled. Are you understanding me now? In other words, uh, what God did, this increase, was to create a testimony, a pray that somebody else could catch hold of faith. Hallelujah. Verse 8, he said, and might not be as their fathers. A stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that whose heart, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast, huh? Was not what? Steadfast with God. Glory to God. In other words, praise God, they backslid. They backslid. Testimonies will help you stay firm. Testimony will help you and others overcome. By the word of your testimony. The manifested blessings of God invoked this reverential awe in the early church in the community of the souls, praise God, in a, in a community of souls came to Christ. People just kept coming to the Lord. Why? Because the awe of God, the reverence of God was permeating the atmosphere. Acts 2 verse 43. He says everyone will, he said, will, was filled with what? They were filled with awe. Huh. 
they were filled with awe, that reverential fear. And many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods, and they gave to anyone who had need. But with this atmosphere of reverence, this atmosphere of awe, what happened? Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere heart, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And what happened? And the Lord added to the number daily those who are being saved. Let me tell you something. An atmosphere where the fear of God is permeating the church in the atmosphere, it sets the stage for divine attraction. It sets the stage for evangelism. It's something about the awe of God that's magnetic. It draws people. Oh, glory to God. It sets the atmosphere for signs and wonders. Huh? Actually, the fear came first, then the signs and wonders. When God's people reverence him, God will manifest himself. And the whole community will be impacted. We have favor. Glory to God. That's the purpose of this increase. Somebody said purpose of increase. Is to fund the gospel and fund the fear. Fund the gospel and fund the fear where people will be in awe of God and be attracted to what he is doing. But after they had prayed, God said, your praise is a trigger. The praise that brings increase isn't just praising God for increase, though. It's not just singing about, huh, the blessings of God. Our praise should acknowledge a whole lot about God. God just inhabits the praises of Israel. Our praise should acknowledge God's divinity. Oh, God. Hmm? Notice what it says in, in verses uh, three through four. He says, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. And you, for you shall judge the people what? righteously and govern the nations on earth. What do we see in, the, in, 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 in these two verses? We see them praising God's divinity. Oh God, hello him, self-existent one. We see them praising his power, his sovereign ruling authority. He governs the nations. We see them praising his immutable character, his character traits such as his justice. His righteousness. He judges the people fairly. Glory to God. Or righteously. And then we see throughout the psalmist, they, they're praising him for his love. Praising him for his mercy. Praising him for his goodness. Praising him for his grace. Oh, hallelujah to God. Let me tell you something. When we just delight in who God is, just, just giving him glory. Oh, God, Abashanda. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches, not in heaven, but in glory. The more glory you give to God, the more he'll bless you back. That's why the saints will say, the more you bless him, the more he'll bless you black the more you bless her just and, and they would say bless the lord bless the lord bless her what were they saying when they said bless the lord they were saying praise him give him glory give him honor and they said the more you do that when the praises go up the blessings come down but you don't have to just be praising god about you know glory to god the the, the things he did uh that are material in your life we're to praise god for who he is Huh? Yeah. Amen, somebody. You can't just have an a imbalanced praise life. Glory to God. You got to praise him when you got and praise him when you don't. Praise him when you understand and praise him when you don't understand. And I'm sure Job was real confused because he had been really showing up blessed in all that time. But when the devil came and took, praise God, all the stuff he had, the children he had, he, he fell down and he worshipped. He worshipped. He acknowledged the sovereignty of God. 
Now he had to, he, he had his wives kind of twisted up because he thought God had done what the devil had done. And he said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But one thing about Job, even when he didn't have all the facts, he knew he ought to bless the Lord at all times. And how many know we never got all the facts? We just need to praise him by faith and know that God is just, know that God is righteous. Hallelujah to God. Yeah. Glory. Amen, somebody. But in this context, when we see that increase, we don't see them praising God initially over increase. We see them praising God for his character. When we just praise God for his character, it makes him want to bless us. How many of you would appreciate if the only thing your children praise you for is the stuff you gave them? Now, we want them to be thankful for the stuff we give them. We don't want them to be, you know, ungrateful for the stuff we give them. But it's good for them to recognize we more than a check. Amen, Amen somebody. And God want to be reverenced and praised for more than the material things he gives us. And the thing that ought to be most notable to us and precious to us about God is his character. Huh? Is his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. That ought to be the main thing we worship and praising God for. But understand, God gives us, praise God, a promise. Psalm 107 verses 8 through 9. Let me say this before I get to the promise. I'm, about to, I'm, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself, but I got one more page to go and we're going to close. Praise God. There ain't a lot on that page. Praise God. He said, oh, that man would do what? Praise the Lord for his what? For his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the what? The longing soul and filleth the hungry with what? With goodness. So I'm not excluding praising God for the material things he gives us. But it shouldn't be the only thing we praise him for. And I'm not saying you got to just be praising God for those things for God to bless you. Just praise him. Just praise him. For who he is. That's the praise for the favor of increase. And now there is a promise for the favor of increase. God has promised to bless and increase those who praise and worship him sincerely. That's verse 5 through 6. He says, let the people praise you, O Lord God. Let all the people praise you. Everybody can get in on this. Then... The earth shall yield her increase. Huh? Now, many translations will try to put that in past or present tense. They will say the earth has yielded her increase. They'll take out the then. But I believe even though the then is in italics in the King James Version, I believe it is a correct rendering of the thought. Because if you read the latter part of the verse, he's talking about something future. Amen. So, even those translations that say the Lord has yielded increase would next say our God huh, shall bless us. But I believe it's all talking about future. In other words, when we give God this praise, it's going to trigger increase and the earth shall yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us, shall bless us, shall bless us shall bless us and this is obviously talking about material blessing because he said the earth shall yield her increase the earth shall yield her increase what come out the earth the wood that built your house the bricks the mortar the metal that your car made out of see God got more than spiritual blessings amen somebody joy don't come out the earth peace don't come out the earth Huh? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Now salvation came out the earth, but it went in and came up on the third day. <laughs> but obviously when they're talking about in Psalm 67, the earth yielding her increase, it's talking about collard greens, it's talking about corn, it's talking about pecans. 
walnut is talking about chicken, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Them chickens going back to the ground. So even them chickens come out the ground. The cow, the, the milk you drinking, it come from that grass that the cow's eating. So when we're talking about the earth yielding the increase, we're talking about material blessing. And God is saying, if we just worship and praise him from the heart, hallelujah to God, giving God a willing praise, serving him with joyfulness of heart for the thing that he has done, God is saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the environment work for you. And saints of God, it has been prophesied by many that we are facing some challenging time, some difficult days ahead. Praise God. But let me tell you, ain't no need to worry what the mama's going to bring. Huh? Just give him some praise in the morning. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Daily I will. Daily I will. Daily I will. I will bless the Lord at all times. No matter what coming, let me tell you, your praise will still the enemy and the avenger. You delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desire of your heart. If you praise him, the earth can't do help but obey God. The earth will yield her increase. And God, and God, and God, and God, not the government, not the Democrat, not the Republican, not Biden, not Trump, not whoever is in the White House, not the Senate, not the Congress, praise God. God, even our God shall bless us. Some folk act like when some people get elected, they God fall off the throne. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Yes. Yeah. That's why we don't have to compromise for any political party. Hold to your integrity. Stand for what's right. Call a spade a spade. Amen. Because God, God, you are my source. Huh? God, even our own God. Our own God. We don't need Buddha. We don't need Allah. We don't need Confucius. We don't need to worship no trees, moon, or stars. Our own God. He's enough to get the job done. Our own God shall bless us. It's emphatic. Shall bless us. Praise can never, now let me just go along with this and, and, and wrap this up. Praise will trigger these blessings. But praise can never take the place of giving our tithes and offering. Ain't giving no offering. I'm just going to give God some praise. I'm just going to offer him some praise. Huh? Amen. Don't try to spiritualize your cheap self. <laughs> Some folks just don't want to give them. So, well, I ain't gonna, you know, God just want our praise. No, he want more than your praise. He wants your money too. Amen. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. One don't take the place of the other. So I'm not saying praise your way to increase me. Well, I ain't got to pay no tithes and give no offering. Because Pat said I can just praise my way to increase. Hmm? Watering empty ground will not produce a harvest. I got a seed in the ground. If you want a harvest, you got to put some seed in there. Then water it with your praise. Water it with hallelujah to God. Woo! Because it is a covenant of increase. Praise can never take the place of your tithes and offering, but neither can your tithes and offering replace your praise. The children of Israel were taught to combine the giving with the praise. Both are needed to trigger consistent increase. Psalm 96, 8 through 9. He says, give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering. It's just so plain. You got to hire somebody and pay them overtime to make you misunderstand this. Give to the Lord the what? The glory, meaning the praise due unto his name. Bring an offering 
and come into his courts. And what you're coming into his courts with? Enter his gate with thanksgiving, enter his court with praise. But when you come into courts with praise, what you need to bring? Bring an offering. One don't take the place of the other. Because when you just want to praise and then don't want to give none, it's lip service. Because where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. I, you know, your, your wife want more than, 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 than praise. Huh? Wait till that anniversary and say, baby, you know them Hallmark cards? No, I bought, I, I, bought, I, I, I bought a birthday card at Walgreens the other day. That thing was $8 and something. And it wasn't all that fancy. Matter of fact, it wasn't fancy at all. These cards have gone up. Huh? Amen? But what man going to tell his wife, baby, I'm just going to give you some praise. Because you know them cars, they too high. These flowers are outrageous. That's just too much money to spend on a bunch of weeds that's going to die overnight. Huh? And you're talking about a vacation and, and going somewhere? We don't need to spend all that money. We can rest right here. Just take off your job. You can sleep all day right here at the house. Huh? What well, about a, well, going out to dinner? I mean, we got food in, in, in already paid for. We don't need to be going out to no dinner. Huh? Because, you know, praise is what I do. <laughs> How you think that's going to go over? Amen, somebody. Amen. Y'all know I'm engaged to be married. And, you know, I did, I've done a lot of praising. You know, I, I know how to get my rap on, but I had to show up with a ring at some point. <laughs> I had to show up with a ring at some point. I had, get, I had to have some tangible. And that's the way some folk act like, what God just wants, he's just looking at my heart. He is looking at your heart. And if your heart is in it, your money will be too. Amen. So Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And just like all of us understand, if we really appreciate somebody, it will manifest in our giving. Praise God. God understands that too. Amen. We had to couple our praise with our giving. He says, give unto the Lord glory due unto his name. Uh, come, uh, uh, bring an offering, come before his court, or worship him in the what? In the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all your earth. Last passage, Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 11. He says, and it shall be that when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God is what giving you and put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. What is he telling them to do? Bring an offering. Bring an offering. We call this the first fruits offering. It's not the same as tithes. It's different. But it is the first fruits offering. And he says in verse 3, And you shall go to the one who is priest in those days and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the country which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. What is he doing? What is he giving God? Praise. He said, then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand. Then the priest will take the basket out of your hand. You bring it with a praise. Then the priest is going to take the basket out of your hand. Notice what it says. You will go to the priest in those days and you got to say something. You got to say something. I declare today the Lord your God that uh, to the Lord your God that I have come to the country which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. In other words, 
This first fruit is coming from the ground God gave us. That's where I got it from. God bless me. That's why I got something to give. And then the preacher take the basket out of your hand and set it before that set it down before the altar of the Lord. He said, and you shall answer and say before the Lord your God, my father was a Syrian who was about to perish. What are you doing? He giving some more praise. You shall answer and say before the Lord your God, my father was a Syrian about to perish, and he went down to Egypt and dwelt there a few in number and there he became a nation great and mighty and populous the Egyptian mistreated us afflicted us uh, and laid hard bondage on us then we cried out to the Lord our God that's a testimony and the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression so the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm with great terror and with signs and wonders he brought us to this place and has given us this land a land flowing with milk and what honey and now behold I have brought the first fruits of the land which you O Lord has given me what are they doing they're praising God they're giving God credit and then he says then you will set it before the Lord your God and do what and worship before your God. You're going to worship. In verse 11. So in this manner. In other words in this manner. So shall, so you shall what? Rejoice in everything. Which the Lord your God. Has given you. And your house. And the you and the Levite. And the stranger who is among you. In other words you need to be praising God. For what he's done. What am I saying? You can't separate the giving from the praise. It goes together. And if you want God to bless the offering, give him some glory. Give him some praise. Don't pay like you're doing God a favor. God was telling them, you need to remember the only reason you got an offering. Huh? Well, I work for this money, what you work with. You work with something God gave you. Huh? Well, I use my mind. I use my brain. Check Nebuchadnezzar. You, you, you know, the saints used to say, my mind, my mind is gone. My mind, my mind. Well, that was Nebuchadnezzar's song. His mind was gone. Now the saints, they had a spiritual meeting. They were saying that old evil mind. I don't have that mind anymore. But some folk not talking about evil mind. They just talking about a mind. They have lost their capacity to think. Your ability to reason is a gift from God. God gave you that. Your body that you use. Somebody's laid up in the hospital. They can't work. So everything you use to get your increase is something God gave you, including the favor to get that job in the first place. We need to give him praise. We need to give him glory. Everybody stand. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your way to increase. Praise him with an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. Remember the Lord your God. Remember the Lord your God. That it is he who has given you power to get wealth to establish his covenant. Remember. Remember. Remember the Lord your God. Remember. Remember, when we worship, remember. Huh? Jesse Jackson used to have a phrase, think, then thank. If you think, you'll thank. If you're not thinking, you're not thinking. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh God, we worship you tonight. And we praise you. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for illumination. Thank you for your word. As you have fed your people, Konamashi, in this room and throughout the airways, Kibiosha, we tap into what you have spoken on today. And we're going to worship you and praise you because of what you have done. And we're going to have the faith to realize that our praise triggers increase. We're not praising you for the increase alone. We're not praising you for future increase alone. We're going to praise you for who you are. We're going to praise you because you're righteous. We're going to praise you because you're good, because you're loving. We're going to praise you because you are God and you're sovereign and you deserve the praise. It is you who have made us and not we ourselves. We're going to praise you because you hold a place that nobody else holds. We're going to praise you. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to praise you. We're going to worship you. And even as we give our offerings, we're going to acknowledge that it is you who gave us to give. And we're going to praise you when we give. We're going to worship you when we give. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to believe you, Father, as we praise you. We're not praising you for the increase per se, but we know by faith your word is true. Then God, even our God, will bless us. The earth will yield its increase and God will bless us. Now, Lord, as you've shown us in your word, those that are present in this room, those that are listening online, every member of latter rain and tabernacle of prayer that you've given me charge concerning over my family, over my children, even over my children to come, I speak your blessing. I speak your blessing. Over your people here tonight, I speak your blessing. And I say, the Lord bless you. <laughs> Lord, I'm asking you to do it. I'm asking you to bless your people. I'm asking you to keep your people. I'm asking that your face shine upon your people and that you be gracious to your people. I'm asking that you cause your countenance to be upon us, your favor. And that you give us peace. And I know you've heard my prayer concerning your people. So I speak this blessing over their lives. By faith. I release these words that are not idle words. That are not empty words. But they are words that have the same power. That Isaac's word had when he spoke over Jacob. That Jacob's word had that he spoke over his sons. I speak the blessing on your people. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Protect you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you. And the Lord be gracious upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord give you peace, well-being, divine prosperity. And Lord, because I have blessed them, I know by faith you have blessed them. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God. Amen. Give as you go. God bless. Praise the Lord. Well, we just talked about testimonies. Come on, get your testimony. Well, 
let's get a mic right quick because they won't hear it online. Praise the Lord. Two and a half years ago, um, I was saying to the Lord, um, Lord, now you know I want one of these SUVs out here. What you say? At the Mercedes lot. I said, you know, I want a GLS 450, 550, or a GLS Maybach. I'm going to tell the truth. Call it by that's name. That's what I said. I said, Lord, that's what I want. Uh huh. And I said, Lord, I don't know how, but I, that's what I want. So I left it alone. That was two and a half years ago. Yeah. On Friday, I said, Lord, um, I need money to get the car, the white car repaired. Uh-huh. I said, you know, I believe you for the repair money for my car and the maintenance on that car. And, um, and I was, thought I was going to go to Jackson to get my uh, my next Mercedes because I was already know I was going to get it. I said, but maybe another year I'll wait to get it. Friday, I said I was waiting for the salesman up at Jackson to call me because I text them, I called them, I emailed them, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Lord, I know there's one on the coast, but you know they don't have any older model Mercedes down there. They always have the new ones. Mm -hmm. I went online Friday. They had a 2017 GLS 450 down here at the lot. What you said? I went on down there. <laughs> I didn't call them. Uh -huh. I went on down there. And I said on my paper, I said, this is what I want right here. Hold on. And he went back. They couldn't find it for a minute. He said, ma'am, um, you got down here just in time because the off this was going to auction come Monday, which was this past Monday. What you say? I went and picked up my car for under twenty thousand on Friday night. What you said? Come on, give God some praise. I said, and, and they paid off the Mercedes, the white one. Glory to God. Well, somebody ought to give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. And and you know one thing she said that the Lord spoke to me earlier today. We need to be specific about what we're asking for. Because sometimes we so general in our praying, we don't know when and if it's been answered. You need to have enough specificity to be able to testify to what the Lord has done. She asked specifically for what she wanted, and God had a specific thing right there at the right time where she needed it. Anybody going to get real specific with God? Glory to God. Come on, give him some praise. Now, if you praise him for her car, woo, I need to look up some vehicles so I can start naming something. I know I need something, but I see I need to get more specific. Glory. I don't know what to call it right now, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up something and call it. Amen, somebody. Woo. Now, come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, she got just what she wanted. She got just what she wanted. She got just what she wanted from the Lord. Oh, she got just what she wanted. Got just what she wanted. Got just what she wanted from the Lord. Mercedes what she wanted. Mercedes what she wanted. <laughs> you got to be specific. And God will give you what you asked for. Woo! I told you I was going to let y'all go home. Give your offering as you go. God bless. Thank you for that testimony. That testimony was a praise. God bless you.